uh, has been 30 years from now, you're going to be in a pub somewhere and somebody's going to say, what the hell happened that day at Newlands? W what are you going to say to them? Well, I'm hoping it's not 30 years and more like 20. I'd like to retire a bit sooner as I'm on the older side. Um, yeah, I don't know. I still, I still can't believe it, to be honest with you. It feels like I'm still going to need to wake up in a sense. But yeah, I'll probably just tell them all about the experience and that we actually made, to the, made it to the finals. Uh, go ahead, sir. The way you, pre the way you play, uh, hi, Sunil from ITB India. The way you played today, is it fair to say Brits defeat the English ladies? I wouldn't say that. Um, I'm a massive team player at the end of the day, and with motivation from the side, or you know, copy that bad with me with Wolfie with a 50. I think we set up the game quite well. So yeah, I wouldn't say that. I'd still say SA beat England at the end of the day. Uh, for those, go ahead. Uh, Tasman, can you tell us a little bit about your catching and just how you reacted? I mean, what were you were you thinking about it? Was it instinct? I was actually hoping you were going to tell me where about the catching because I also don't know what happened there. My, my legs were so tired after the batting. I just reacted and yeah, it stuck. And once they started moving me everywhere, the ball kept following me at a stage. They actually said we should maybe throw you the ball to ball. And I don't ball at all. So yeah, I don't know. The catches came and they stuck. And today was my day and I'm glad I could take it. And just on your batting, uh, I mean, it was maybe a bit of a slower start to the tournament than you would have wanted. But then these last two matches, you've been phenomenal. What's changed and, and what kinds of things were you working on? Well, I've actually felt quite positive with the tri-series. I actually scored the 50 with West Indies and I actually had a good knock against Australia. I just needed a bit more support. So in my head, I was very confident. Pakistan is a bit of a different story. I don't know what happened there. But yeah, with Wolfie and I, we knew we had to in the power play. Of course, we have to pick up and be a bit more aggressive. So I'm feeling good. It doesn't always come off, but I'm going to ride the wave while I still can. Azai, thank you. Uh, Tasman, uh, yeah, just... Um, there have been a few moments in your, your life and your career that's been fairly tough. Uh, I mean, does it make today just a, a hell of a lot sweeter? Definitely does. I try not to get too emotional, but yeah, today was very, very special for me. Cool. It's been high. Cool. Anisha Ghosh from India. Tell us a bit about the Olympic rings on your biceps. You've obviously had that athletics background, but what is the importance of it and how do you look at it against the backdrop of how your career panned out today on the field? Well, I'd like to say it's an already sign since I don't do javelin anymore, but yeah, um, I won world champs at a younger age, so that's always been the top, you know, top shelf. But if we can win a final, yeah, I think it'll actually beat. I might have to put the Protea badge next to this at the end of the day. And in terms of your non-selection in the 2012 uh, Summer Olympics, how would you look back on that particular day? And you're on the cusp of creating history as, uh, as part of the first South African team to be playing a home World Cup final. Yeah, I'd like to think God puts us on paths and ways to go. So I think he changed my path. Um, maybe might be an inspiration to maybe young girls or whatever the case would be or helping other people, not necessarily in cricket. I always try to remain and say I want to be a human first before I'm a cricketer. So I think that maybe just gave me the lines to change my direction and help people out. Final one, your message to the Australian team, defending champions, title favourites, undefeated in the competition so far? Um, I'm a bit too straight and forward, so I'm trying to work on that because I like to say things as they come. But at the end of the day, cricket is a very funny game. And Australia might be the top, but at the end of the day, you play the ball, you don't play the players. And I think that's what we did in this England side. We didn't play England that we always lost. And we, it's a constant reminder that I heard I was never in that, you know, the semifinals when they lost. This is the first semifinal I've ever been in and it's the first time against England. So we'll take it as it comes, but very excited to go to the final. Thank you, Zubair. Yeah. yeah. Uh, hi, hi, Tasmin. Uh, first of all, congratulations. This tournament started uh, on a very negative note, selection controversy, then losing to uh, Sri Lanka in the first game. What has been the strongest point about this, uh, this South African group? What do you think has stood out in this entire tournament for you guys? I was actually scared when we start gelling because we haven't actually gelled as a unit, to be honest with you. Um, there's either be good batsmen or good bowlers. We haven't really clicked and we ended up making it to a semi. I think today we almost basically clicked. The batting was a lot better. Um, I think the bowling, you know, maybe the power play could have been a bit more tighter, but I'm hoping everything clicks when we go against Australia. And what was the discussion uh, in the ground when England were off to a flyer, scoring at 10, or, uh, 10 and over? What was the sort of discussion after four or five overs uh, in the match? They weren't necessary. they were scoring boundaries, but it wasn't off cleanly shots. I don't know if you guys saw, it was a lot of nicks and stuff. So we still said, you know, let's stick to the basics. Once the power play is over and we can actually put the players out, you know, four, four of them out, I think the game will become easier. So it's basics, you hit the ball, you, your stock ball or whatever you bowling, make sure you're fail set for that. And the catches came and we took them and yeah, the end is history. Thank you. Just to follow up on that one as well. Um, could you just tell us as a team, what has changed from the first game? Obviously, you guys lost in Sri Lanka. What has changed in terms of the team? 
Listen now. I think we've always believed that we could do it. Um, so I don't think it's necessary something that a person needs to rock up. But I think maybe a bit of adrenaline and nerves. I mean, you're playing in front of I don't know how many people in your own country. And um, for myself, I was very nervous. I mean, I even got hit against the head. I <laughs> wasn't sure if I was going off or not. What was I doing? But yeah, I think we've become more settled to it. And we weren't expecting to be tech technically to be where we are now. So it's kind of like I said, the underdog, which underdog ends up making you want to be better. So we just gel as a team and we keep going. Hi, hi Tasman. Um, just out of curiosity, what do you think had a bigger impact on the results, uh, your runs or those four catches, specifically the one at mid-wicket and then the one at fi short fine maybe? I'd like to think the runs because as a batter, when you, you know, backs against the wall, it's a bit difficult to get the ball through the fielders, especially when you need 10 and over. So I'd like to think the runs maybe made England stress a bit. Just quickly, um, you, went, you went off briefly, I think you might have mentioned it there, you went off briefly after the, the, the capsi catch. What, what, what was behind that? What was it? Yeah, when I dived, um, this whole thing was actually, I thought it was a vein that popped. It stood out, but they, they pushed it down, so it's back down. We weren't sure if it was a bone or not. And then I said to him, Mo, he's our physio, I said, please let me go back on the field. He said, no, let's go sort this. I said, Mo, I need to go to the field. So yeah, I had to go off and he had to just make sure the doctor and him just checked it and make sure there's no bones broken. Uh, Gomesh, yeah. Uh, Tasman, just wanted to ask your thoughts on uh, Ismail Kaap and uh, Ayabonga Kaka. Ismail and Kaap, uh, they were in their knees just after the last over and in between as well. And then Kaka, who had gone for 20, 25 runs in the first three, came back, comes back and takes three in a final. Uh, what were they feeling in the middle? What could you pick up? Or what were they saying in the middle? Could you, your thoughts on them? Like I always say, cricket is a funny game, but I'll throw the ball to one of those three at any day. I mean, they seniors, they know what to do. They know when you tell them to bowl a stock ball or bowl a Yorker, they pretty much can give it five out of the six times for you where your younger bowler probably won't. So they knew what they were up against. So like I said, I'll throw the ball to them any day to do that. Cool. Thank you so much for those who we'll finish off here in house before we move over to Zoom. Thank you. In front here. Tasman, the, the English captain said that the crowd uh, you know, was a great experience for them. You guys have never played in front of this many people apart from this tournament. What's it like playing in front of them? Like, are you hearing some cool things coming at you or like, what's it like? Well, I've always said I'd rather be in a crowd in my, in my own home, if I can put it that way, because it's not nice to play in England and have their crowds there. I've been there many single times. So, yeah, it's difficult. You hear people chanting your name, and I actually, you know, I'm one of those friendly guys. I actually want to wave or do like a robotic stretch and hope someone follows me. But then I think to myself, shit, if that ball has to come, what am I going to do? Am I going to catch the ball? You know, I don't want to take the focus away from the game, but I like to have a good time. But, yeah, having our crowd definitely helped us. Awesome. Thank you so much. Moving over to Zoom, we just have a time for a couple of questions. Um, we'll start off with Savish and then Bernard Whelan. Thank you, Savish. Yeah. Hi, Tasmin. Uh, firstly, a big congratulations on the win and uh, for qualifying for the first time in the finals of the World Cup. Uh, I wanted to ask uh, how important is this win for uh, South Africa as a whole country? Uh, do you think this uh, win can inspire the next generation of uh, women's cricketers in South Africa? I don't want to make the same mistake as Wolfie, so I know you on Zoom. Um, <laughs> Because Wolfie was looking around a bit, I don't want to look too stupid. Um, no, I think it definitely inspires the younger generation. A lot of times in our country, you know, we have a multi-different race and cultures and all of those things. So to actually be able to, you know, make cricket a career and to show what it's about, especially in the women's game, I definitely think this was a massive change. And I think for the first time, you know, us as women can actually stick up a hand and we actually have the girls rooting for us at the end of the day. Thank you, Savish. Um Bernard, um, and then we'll finish off with Sloney. Bernard, thank you. Hi, Tasman. Congratulations on your great performance today. When I spoke to you in Dublin last summer, you were talking about possibly retiring, but obviously <laughs> you, don't re you, you, don't, you, you don't regret that decision now. Uh, you've really come back. And what did you do to reinvent yourself during the, the last few months? Yeah, I'd like to always tell myself not to retire because when it gets a bit hard, a person tends to think that's the easy way out. I am 32 at the moment. And I think maybe golf will be a bit of a better job to do. I like World Champs longer drive. I've been there. I think it's a bit less stress having to, you know, 11 teammates on the field. Um, I don't know. I just went back to the drawing board. I looked at a power game, which I still think I'm capable of a lot more, to be honest with you. I think I can actually be a lot more aggressive, especially in the power play. But it's getting there slowly, but surely, I mean, it's ne but rather late than never. I think a person's game can evolve after the age of 30. And I think I'm starting to get to know my game a bit better. 
Awesome. And did you finally from me, did you, did you summer, learn a lot from Bernard, last summer's Bernard, series just, against... Bernard, sorry, I just have time for... Sorry, go ahead. Minute. You go ahead. Go, sorry. Yes, Congratulations. Right, thank, you. thank you, Bernard. Shoni, uh, we'll finish off with you. Um, thanks, Lita. Um, hi, Tasman. This is Sony from ENCA. First of all, congrats on your knock. Just in terms of the thinking of retiring, can you talk us through what was going through your head at the time? And where does this kind of form that you're sort of in at the moment um, count in terms of the, your career? And given that like last, last year you weren't initially in the team for the Commonwealth Games and then you were in and now you've just had quite an, um, an interesting few months. Yeah, I've always backed myself. I think they made a mistake to leave me with the England series, to be honest with you. Um, I actually said that in my PDP, um, they see me just as a T20 player and I think I'm capable of doing all formats, but I've had that discussion with them. So, yeah, it's never nice to get in left at home. And when people leave you at home more often, you kind of think maybe I should, you know, save the nation and go to become a teacher or something different. But, yeah, and then when you look again, you get the call up. I got the call up with the England series, um, the last T20, and I scored a 50. And then you go again. I mean, cricket is a funny game. You're on the top, the next day you're at the bottom. But I kind of think my capability is there, and I would yeah, I'd like to go for another few years, if not, and maybe another World Cup or two. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. That was an entertaining one. Thank you.